Hey, this is Doug with Design Aid Studio. And recently I was asked for some help tutorial type steps for what to do with the jackpot regarding how you use the interface for it. And specifically I'm talking about the web user interface or web UI. So for a moment, let's forget completely about the pendant, which is still under development. Let me just slide it out of the way, and we will mention some things regarding a Lowrider 3 that's being driven around by a jackpot control board and being controlled by the user with the web user interface. So this is my dusty old cell phone that's not still used for anything related to cell phone usage. And I've simply kind of dedicated it as a web UI interface for the jackpot. So I've turned the jackpot on and this phone is set up so that it connects by default to the Fluid NC uh, access point. And that means that I can go in a browser and I can start typing one for 192.168. Dot o dot one and the history brings up the fluid access point and then that brings me into this interface right here and <clears throat> the normal process would be to home the machine and then probe down to the material and then go to your SD card where presumably you have a g-code file for cutting and when we look here we'll see that there's several different options. One is you might want to jog the machine around uh, and you can jog it in the X plus, X minus direction, the Y plus and Y minus direction, and the concentric circles allow you to move 0.1 of a millimeter, one millimeter, 10 millimeters, or 100 millimeters. And then there is the same option to move in the Z axis up or down using this on the side. If you scroll down some more, you can see that we have idle. And then down here, we have SD card. And SD card, is, the SD files area, is where you could browse. For instance, I have a G-code folder. And that G-code folder is where my uh, files for cutting jobs are located. And uh, in my new SD card, in this one, I don't have a whole lot but you can see that a folder structure is something that you can browse. And here is a G-code file for cutting a torsion box, a six inch tall torsion box for a full size low rider table. So if I was to tap that now, um, then I have these different G-code files inside that folder and I can hit the play button to cause one of them to play or run. And uh, that's actually um, how you would actually start a job. And so if I tap on that, it highlights it, but it doesn't really do anything. But there are these options. Now, if you, like me, fat fingers and all, you can do a pinch zoom to get closer to make the buttons easier to deal with. And, but there it is, that button right there will actually play. Um, there's some other things down here that are not of consequence, but when we come up here, we see that these different buttons do different things. And on these buttons, if you look, some of them have uh, a dollar sign followed by a letter code. And the dollar sign is a reference for GRBL related things. Those can be commands. And I think in some cases, they can also be a preface for a value in a variable. And so um, in these controls, you'll notice that there are home icons in each direction. For instance, I can home X by itself. I can home Y by itself. I can home Z by itself, or I can home everything. So in this instance, I'm going to tap to home all, and you'll see my lowrider three nudge up in the Z, uh, to home that, and then it will nudge over in the X and over in the Y to be homed. And my 
X and Y are switched, swapped, so it may look a little different to you than how you would normally see it. And then I have attached to mine a homemade tiny touch plate. I made my homemade tiny touch plate from a stainless steel ruler and I have the electrode lead for it um, magnetically uh, attached to the nut, the collet nut. And so I would be able to put some type of material uh, down here on my spoil board, put the tiny touch plate on top of it, and then tell the jackpot board that I want to home down to it. And because my electrode wire for probing is attached to the collet nut, there is a tiny electrical current that flows through, all the way through the nut and down through the bit itself. And when the bit comes in contact, with the stainless steel uh, tiny touch plate, which you can buy from Ryan's uh, web store, or you can make one like this. And when that bit comes in contact with that stainless steel touch plate, it completes a circuit, which tells this firmware that it has reached the material. And the script for that, one little bit of info in the script for that is the thickness of the touch plate. In my case, that is 0 0.34 millimeters. That value is programmed into the script so that when it touches, makes contact, completes the circuit, and it knows how high the material is, it not only zeroes it at the material, it does it by compensating for the thickness of the tiny touch plate. And the script, usually the way the script is worked is that when it touches, it 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 may touch and then touch again, or if it touches once, it will set the zero accounting for the thickness of the touch plate, and then it will rise up to a, a preset amount that you've inputted into the script or that someone has inputted into the script for a, a kind of a safe height. And then you can remove your tiny touch plate and you can remove your electrode and park them uh, out wherever, wherever you disconnect them to haul them away or park them away on top or somewhere snug or some container that you've built or attached to your low rider core. In my case, I have a little nook and cranny that I slide that into. And at that point, you are ready to go ahead and run your job. Now, in order to probe conveniently, you would want there to be a button right here in this interface to probe with. And this is something that you can easily do, and there are scripts for probing that are available, and it works in a concept of a macro, a little tiny snippet of code that gets activated on command. Now, this button right here that has the pencil for editing, that button is how you edit the list of macro buttons that you see here. Each one of these buttons does something. And you can figure out what they do if it looks cryptic as it is. You can figure out what they do by finding out which snippet of code they activate. So if I click this button here, we will see that macro one, let me see if I can get this in focus. So macro one is on the first line and it has a gold color assigned to it and the letters MD. So it's dollar sign MD. And whatever's in macro 1.g is what happens when that uh, gets run. And so macro 2 with a red color assigned, macro 3 with a blue color assigned, macro 4 blue color assigned, a light blue, and macro 5 and 6 with a dark blue color assigned. And each of those can have a target. The target is uh, the ESP itself. That's the main compute module for the jackpot board or an SD target or a URL target. And in this case, what, what you can do is, assuming that you've already selected a snippet of code for probing and you've entered your proper values into it and saved it. For example, you could have saved it as 
probe.g onto the SD card, then you can click plus and we can change M7 to put something like probe. And then we can change uh, the icon for it. We can look for an icon that looks probing type related. And for some reason, all of my icons are running out in a row instead of being stacked up. But um, I'm not going to go all the way through them right now looking for a probe icon. But you can set an icon and you can assign a color. In this case, I will go with red. And then you simply change the words macro 7.g. You edit that to make it say probe. Dot G or whatever you have your probe code snippet named as. And then when you're done, you hit save. And now you'll notice that that has added a new button in my macro area called probe. And if I were to tap that, it would actually probe. Now, if I go to my uh, G code files list, I can go up to the root up out of the G-Code folders, and I'll find that I've got a folder for park snippets of code and probe snippets of code. So if I go into my probe snippets of code, we'll see that I have uh, several different scripts for probing, and the one of them that is the most general purpose that I would use most often, I would save a copy of it and rename it to just probe.g, and locate it in the root so that I would not need to put a complicated uh, folder path to get to it. And then that would work for me for probing. So again, the workflow would be that you, you turn it on, you go in your browser on your Wi-Fi connected device to the interface. And once you're there, the first thing that you would do is home the device. The second thing that you would do is position it for your job potentially reset the zero. And then when your material is in place, you would probe down to the material. And then finally, you would go down to where the G code on your SD card is for running that job. And you would hit the play button beside that G code and it would cut your job. I hope this has been helpful. This is Doug with Design 8 Studio. And until the next video, I wish you happy making.